she'd say when she would return. No, no message. Uh, just tell her I called. Get Mrs. Holland on the telephone and tell her I've been unexpectedly called to Boston. Yes, sir. Uh, she's not at home now. I've been trying to reach her all afternoon. Incidentally, you might mention that. Yes, sir. Shall I say when you'll be back? Yes, Monday. Again. Darling, you're improving. You're only ten minutes late today. Mommy, I'll go and get Daddy. Still working on that Boston. I took a trip down to Dukey Highway. Hey, be careful. My goldfish is in there. What's that, Junior? My goldfish. I was afraid you'd forget it, so I packed it myself. Board and everything. Better turn it top up. I hope there's no damage done, ma'am. I hope there isn't either. Isn't your name Jake Dill? Sure. How do you know? Well, bless my soul, it isn't Ellen Blair. It was Ellen Blair. Of course, I remember you went to the city to get married. A fellow by the name of, uh... Ha! Huh, that's my name, too. Why, of course, I remember. Jim Harkis read all about in his paper. Recollect, Jim? Why, of course I do. I used to write book reviews for him. Jim's dead now. Oh. Something went wrong with his liver. Fine-looking boy you got there. He's the spitting image of you. So you thought you'd come back and visit the old town, eh? Yes. You don't figure on putting up to a hotel, do you? Well, only until I can find a suitable cottage. mighty glad you met up with me. I'm a boy. You know, I dabble in real estate for train trains. You do? Yeah. Uh -huh. I've got just the house for you, all furnished from stem to stern, and I'll rent it to you dirt cheap. But I'd like to see it. All right. If you take the house, 
I won't charge you anything for the ride to and from. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, if you rent the house. And it's only two bits if you don't. Good morning, Miss Gibson. Good morning, Mr. Hall. Mr. Lawton wants you to call. He said it's very important. Get him on the telephone. Cortland, 405-601. Yes. Mr. Lawton on the phone. Hello, Jim. What's up? Well, come on, Mr. Bad News. What is it? Now, you'd better come over here, Tom. This matter can't be discussed over the phone. Why, I just arrived at the office. I haven't had time to open... All right, I'll be right over. I'll be at Mr. Lawton's office if you need me. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, did my wife call? No. Well, you phoned her Saturday, as I told you. Yes, sir. And you explained I tried to reach her myself? Yes. Did she leave a message? No. Hmm. There must be some mistake. I can't believe that Ellen would leave me. She has, Tom. I advised it. You? She planned to sue you for divorce. Was going to name a certain Jane Halsworth. I presume you know her. Yes. I convinced Ellen that a scandal at this time would be most inadvisable. And then there was Junior to think of. You should have made her listen to reason. I did. That's why I've drawn up this separation agreement. You know, Tom, the sooner husbands realize that there aren't two sets of commandments, one for women and one for men. But she could have come to me. And you would have denied it again. Oh, no, Tom. Ellen has done more than her part. She stood by watching, waiting, and hoping that you would come to your senses. Junior was beginning to ask questions. What about the boy? I've arranged for the youngster to spend part time with you. Better sign this time. Put anything away in this house and find it again? Why, Junior, what are you trying to do? My safety committee badge. I can't find it. Well, where did you put it? Well, if I knew where I put it, I'd know where to find it. Now, now. You are a scamp. Here, what's this? That's it. Thanks. Will you please help me fix it on? Of course. There. Wouldn't Daddy be surprised if you saw me wearing this? Expect he would. But what does it mean? It means I'm a cop. A what? Cop. You know, an officer. 
I gotta keep the kids off the street and make them quit throwing papers in the school grounds. Oh. But most of all, I gotta stop fights. Oh, yes. But I can lick them. Oh, you sure you in it? Oh, I. Oh, 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 you give me my car. Oh, 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 stop it, I tell you. You can't get into a fight. Leave me alone. I ain't getting into no fight. I'm stopping one. Boys, stop that fighting. Come on. Stay off. Come on. Stop it. I just couldn't stop them alone. Master Hall, you are accused of conduct on becoming a member of the safety committee and as a gentleman. Have you anything to say for yourself? Well, Mr. Principal, when you gave me my badge, you made me take an oath to honor my flag, my country, and my school, and to perform my duties uh, dil diligently, didn't you? That's right. But why did you create a disturbance on the school grounds? You said I had to stop fights, didn't you? And I stopped them, didn't I? <clears throat> uh, yes, I presume so. But the method you employed scarcely showed the best judgment. If they refused to stop when you commanded, you should have reported to me. But heck, a real cop wouldn't run away from a fight to tell the sergeant on the beat. In view of the emergency, I would suggest that Safety Committee Man Hall be commended for zeal in the faithful and courageous performance of his duty. And furthermore, you are made custodian of law and order in your classroom. Thank you, sir. If you mean what I think you do, and while I'm a cus... Uh... Custodian. Yeah, that's right. And there won't be any more fighting, even if I have to lick every kid in the class. We're all so interested in the boy. His work in the past six months has shown such a marked improvement. It seems a pity to interrupt it now. Perhaps you can't realize what a change of schools would mean. New methods, strange teachers, different playmates. It all tends to confuse a boy of his age. I realize all that, Miss Booth. But there's nothing I can do about it. He must spend the next six months with his father. I don't want you to think I'm trying to pry into your private affairs, but I'm so fond of the boy. Mommy, should I pack my toothbrush away tonight? Oh, hello, Miss Booth. Hello, Thomas. How are you? All right. Did you come to say goodbye to me? Yes. I'll be in the classroom when your train leaves tomorrow. I know you're going to make us proud of you. Sure. I'll show those kids in New York a thing or two. Goodbye, Thomas. Have a good time. You bet I will. Goodbye, Mrs. Hall. Goodbye, Miss Booth. Thank you for coming.
Mommy. You know something? What is it, darling? I don't want to go. I don't want to leave you. Why can't Daddy come here? So we'll all be together. Oh, it won't be so long. You'll be back before you know it. Six months is an awful long time. And I'm gonna miss you. I can feel it already. Oh, you'll get over that pretty soon, darling. You must go to bed now. Mr. Lawton's clerk is coming early in the morning. I'll take you to the train. Don't you worry, Mommy. I'll always like you. Yes. You know, Mom, we got to talk this thing over. I was going to take you with me, but I can't now. You got to stay here and take care of Mommy. We just got to buck up. Because it isn't right for us men to go around crying and making our woman folks feel bad. But, heck. I just feel sick all inside. I can feel it right here. Are you sure you'll recognize Master Hall, Mary? You know, I've never seen him. I'm sure I recognize him. Sure I knew him before, uh, since he was born. Uh, do you think we could have missed him? Ah, oh, keep your shirt on. Ah, oh, here comes the precious lamb. Back, please. Keep the way clear. Dr. Junior, how the feel I am. How are you, darling? Oh, my, how you grow. Oh, Mary. Disgusting. But what can one expect of a servant? Did you miss me? Are you well? And, well, how are you? I'm fine, Mary. But, but where's Daddy? Oh, your Daddy? Well, he was so busy at the office, so he sent us to fetch you. How on, Master Hall will be in my care, Mary. Junior, this is your teacher. Tutor. Your tutor. I'm very pleased to meet you, my little man. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Thanks, Mr. Page. I'll be seeing you. It's been a pleasure to... Follow me, my little man. Come, come. <clears throat> After me, my little man. Come, come, a little man. Come, come, come. Will you see that Master Hall's bath is prepared immediately? Bath? But I always take my bath at night. Well, here, my little man, you'll take your bath whenever I think I should give it to you. And if the water is to be agitated, I can attend to that also. Yes, but don't rub so hard. Anyway, ah! Little men should not argue with their superiors. I don't need any help to take a bath. What do you think I am? A sissy? Uh, 
Oh, you're incorrigible. How do you like your room? Boy, it's swell. And thanks, Dad, for the bike. And what do you think of the new swimming pool? It's keen. I bet Mother would have loved it. I tried to bring her along, but... Well, how's Mother feeling? Oh, she's fine. Great pardon, sir. You're wanted on the telephone. Hello. Oh, hello. Well, I'd like to very much, but you see, I, uh... I understand, dear. We'll make it some other night. When did the little darling arrive? Oh, I must meet the dear child. Oh, but why wait until tomorrow? I'll be over and have dinner with you both tonight. See you later, dear. <coughs> What's the matter? The boyfriend whacked in town. What does that mean? That means for the next six months, I've not only got to play the father, but the son, too. <laughs> Tom, dear, the boy's very clever. <laughs> what kind of animals are those? Those are animal crackers. Well, uh, what are they supposed to be? They're supposed to be in my applesauce. <laughs> Oh, you darling. You deserve a kiss for that. Don't do that. Why, Junior? Ah, oh, Dad. I'm not a baby anymore. Women think just because a fellow's too little to protect himself, they can mush all over him and kiss. And, well, Mummy's not like that. She treats a fellow regular. Why, darling, doesn't your mother ever kiss you? Sure she does. But her kisses ain't all wet. Are they, Dad? You're very rude, son. Miss Holdsworth is just trying to show you that she likes you. I'm sorry I was rude, but I don't want women liking me outside of money. One woman liking a fella is enough. Ain't it, Dad? <clears throat> it's time for you to take your daily ride in the park. Well, go ahead, my little man. Get in the motor car. I uh, saw those marbles in the drugstore window and I thought Junior might like them. <laughs> and you're practicing up on your game so he can't beat you. Uh, no, no, not exactly. But, you know, a boy expects his father to know everything and I just want to be prepared in case Junior should ask me for some pointers. <laughs> I've been thinking about the boy, too. Yes? Uh, do you suppose he'd like to go to a matinee with me? Oh, that's great. But he isn't at home now. He's out for his drive at this time. Oh, that's too bad. I'll try some other time. Tom, dear. Hmm? Suppose you substitute for him. Well, uh, I'd like to, but I... Really, I have so much work to do. So I've noticed. Uh, <laughs> well, now, honest, I promised myself as soon as I hit a marble, I was going to call in my secretary and uh, dictate. All right, then. I'll run along. Well, I didn't mean to uh, chase you away. 
I don't want to interfere with business. Give me a ring later. Bye bye, dear. Bye bye. Now, just be calm. Be calm. Oh, my goodness. What are we going to do? Well, please, please, please control yourself. Uh, but now, tell me, tell me again, just how did it happen? We told you everything. It was like this. We get caught in a traffic jam. The signal was against us. We drive on a half a block, maybe, look back, and Master Hall's gone. There's no one in the car. We turned right back and searched the whole district. He was nowhere in sight. Oh, but I can't comprehend. I can't. I... Oh, but I feel so frightfully upset. I, I fear I'm going to faint. You better call his father oh. first. Maybe he was kidnapped. Why, right. Thank you. I will. Uh, 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 Vanderbilt, three, four, four, two, eight. I'll rush right home. Uh, you call the police. Miss Gibson. Calling all cars. Thomas Hall, Jr., kidnapped. Seven years old, dark hair, dark eyes. The last scene was wearing tan suit, dark shoes. I told you. Do you know the signal, Snowball? Sure. Okay, come on, Dan. Let's go over this thing again now. Where did you work before coming here? Nowhere, sir. That's just what I thought. I couldn't find a job, not for two years. Good reason why. You were in jail. No, what sir. What were I... you in for? Why, I... I thought so. And you got sent up with him? No, sir. I... When were you released? Just before coming to take this job, was it? No, sir. I, I thought so. You escaped. You might as well spill the rest of it. Where's the kid? I don't know. Then you tell me. Where is he? I don't know. You do. But I tell you... Sit uh, down. Now, there you are. A couple of escaped convicts. <laughs> Sit down. When did they come to work for you? Uh, several weeks ago. And you won't talk, eh? How about this mug here? Why, my good man... Sit down. I shortly afterwards. Just what we thought. They're all members of the same kidnapping gang. We've been on the trail for a year. Where's the kid? Why, my good man. Come on, come clean. Now, where are you hiding them? Well, I merely wanted to explain... Good. ...that I haven't the vaguest idea. And furthermore, I have never been incarcerated. Now, <gasps> gentlemen, please. Where did you put that gap? Sir, I will get my references. They're in my boudoir. Just a moment. You'll stay right here till I call the patrol wagon. 
We'll take them all over to the station house and see what their fingerprints tell us. No, you don't. Gentlemen, you still wish to see my references? Looks like we almost made a mistake. Yeah, but that mug still don't look kosher to me. Son, your conduct of this afternoon was very reprehensible. What does that mean, Dad? You were very naughty. You had me dreadfully frightened. I'm sorry. You realize that the whole police force was out looking for you? Yep, and one of them almost got me. Did you ever get away from a cop, Dad? <laughs> no, son, I uh, never found it necessary. But do you realize your escapade of this afternoon caused several people lots of trouble? Who? Well, your tutor, for one. They accused him of kidnapping you, and the police were about to arrest him. Do you suppose they would have put him in jail? That's exactly what they were going to do, if you hadn't come back. But heck, I couldn't stay away forever just to get him put in jail. Now, my little man, how do you pronounce this word? Can't. No, no, no. Can't. Oh, I can't say can't. And anyway, I heard Babe Ruth over the radio. And he says can't just like I do. But my little man, Mr. Ruth is no criterion. He ain't, huh? Well, the next day he made two home runs. I guess that's something. Oh, I <laughs> What is that? Those ragamuffins again, eh? Now you stay right here. I'm going to call the police. He's calling the cops. Come on down. Yeah, come ahead. I can't. Sure you can. But I promised my dad I wouldn't leave the house unless I told my tutor. Ah, oh, that's okay. Tell him after you get out. Sure, that won't make you a liar. No, no, Tommy. Grab that bridge higher up. What is your opinion, Doctor? An immediate spinal operation is imperative. Shall you get everything ready? Do you intend to operate here? The boy's condition is too serious to risk removal to a hospital. I've tried to reach his father, but I can't locate him. But we must have consent of a parent before operating. Uh, can you reach his mother? I've already put in a long-distance call for her. Thank you. Uh, do you mind trying again, please?
Mr. Hall's with the boy, miss. If you'll wait in the living room, I'll try and get word to him. I wish you would, please. Someone to see you in the living room. Little fellow. He's doing as well as can be expected. How did you find out? They tried to reach you at my apartment. Oh, yes, I know. I only arrived a short while ago. But fortunately, they succeeded in obtaining his mother's consent to the operation. I'm so sorry. It was very thoughtful of you to come. But I must run back up to the boys' room. You'll excuse me. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, dear. Oh, Tom, dear. I came because I thought I could be of some assistance. Well, thanks, sir. But the doctor and two nurses are remaining all night. But darling, I couldn't leave you at a time like this. I could be comfortable right here. That won't be necessary. I'll have Mary prepare one of the guest rooms for you. Oh, Tom, dear. Can't I see the little fellow? I'm sorry. No one is allowed to see him. How's the boy? Much improved. He called for his mother all during the night, but he's asleep now. Mr. Hall will be down immediately. Oh, leave that here, please. Good morning. Good morning, Tom, dear. How's the little fellow this morning? He's much better, thank you. What is it, dear? I couldn't sleep all night. Oh, that's too bad. I kept thinking about the boy. Oh, he'll be all right, Tom. He isn't happy here. Well, he should be. You've given him everything. Everything but what he needs most. Oh, that's ridiculous, Tom. You've been so thoughtful of him. The boy needs his mother. Oh, I'm Mrs. Hall. Where's Mr. Hall? At breakfast, madam. Thank you. Where's Junior, Tom? He's in his old room. I'll take you to him, dear. This is Mrs. Hall, Miss I'm Beth. so glad you came. Of course, darling. I knew you would.
Ellen. Mrs. Hall spent the night in Junior's room. Oh, I see. Good morning, Ellen. Oh, you didn't get any rest. Oh, I've been all right. Have my darling. How do you feel, son? I'm feeling fine. Here, why don't you come downstairs with me and have breakfast? Go on, Mommy. I'll be all right. You know Daddy hates to eat alone. All right, Tom. I'll go to my room and freshen up. Here. This is one breakfast that Mr. and Mrs. is going to have as they used to have it. But I have my orders. Scott with your orders. But, but I insist. Oh, go on with your insisting. Here, 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 here. <laughs> they borrowed this from the dining car as a momentum when they were on their honeymoon. Go dust the banisters. This is one meal that I'm doing. Go on, go on. I'm just before beginning to throw things. No, there'll be no newspaper reading this morning. I thought breakfast was ready to be served. It, it is, sir. In the garden, sir. It was better. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Still use sugar on your grapefruit, Ellen? Thank you. Good morning, Mrs. Hall. Oh, good morning, Mary. Oh, the idea of serving this from the fresh strawberries in the market. <laughs> I picked them out myself. Mm. I made the Italian dump them so to see if they were the same on the top and the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> they look delicious. You know, this is the first time that Mary has served me since, uh, in six months. morning. Made the way you like them. <laughs> and sausages with their jackets on. Remember the morning after Junior was born. You were that excited with yourself. You ate a whole dozen of them before you started keeping count. <laughs> and I'm hungry enough to eat a double portion this morning. Well, sure. Eat all you want. I prepared plenty of them. And if you don't mind my saying so, I did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary. Good morning. <laughs> oh, Mary, they're delicious. Oh. Uh, have another one, dear? Well, yes. I think I will. Mm -hmm. Well, they're certainly as good as ever. <laughs> You're mistaken. They're better than ever. Good morning, Tom, dear. Oh, uh, good morning. Good morning. I'm Miss Holdsworth. 
We didn't have a chance oh, yesterday. Oh, pardon me. Uh, this is my wife. So pleased. And how's the youngster? Doing nicely, thank you. I'm so glad. Oh, but uh, don't let me interrupt breakfast. Oh, Tom, dear, if you'll get me my overnight bag, I'll run along. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, all right. Certainly. I'm so glad for this opportunity to be alone with you. I feel there is something you should know. Something we should talk over. It's, a. Uh, it's about Tom. Tom? Well, you mean Mr. Hole, my husband? Yes. Please don't blame him too much for this most unfortunate accident. I feel that it was mostly my fault. Your fault? I realize now that Tom should have spent more time with Junior. I didn't know the little fellow meant so much to him. Perhaps Tom should have told you. Oh, I don't blame you for being bitter. But I assure you that when Junior comes here for his next six months' day, I'll do all I can to make him happy. I'll try and be a mother to him. My dear Miss Holdsworth, motherhood is one thing that cannot be shared or cultivated. That, of course, I, I shouldn't expect you to know that. I'm indeed sorry I cannot share my boy with you. He is my responsibility. I will see to it in the future that neither you nor Tom will be handicapped by him. Please. Miss Holsworth waiting for you, Tom. Now, Mr. Thornton, you said that you were employed as teacher to Junior. I was engaged as a tutor. Oh, yes, of course. And uh, you had complete charge of Thomas Hall, Junior? Yes, sir. Well, while you were employed as... Uh, engaged. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Engaged. While you were engaged in the Hall home, did you at any time see anything that, in your opinion, was unfit? I object, Your Honor. I should think you would. Objection sustained. Will you please tell the court your daily routine for Thomas Hall, Jr., while he was in your complete charge? Well, <clears throat> I insisted that he arise at 8. Exercise until 8.30. Relax with me until breakfast time, which was at uh, 9 o'clock. Bask in the sunshine until 10.45. Then I would allow him to uh, wrap around in the garden until lunchtime. But after lunch, he was to relax again with me in uh, conversation. Thank you. That'll be all. Uh, but in the afternoon, I uh, let him uh, drive out to the park and uh, feed the goldfish. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Oh, very well, if you want to know what happened to him after that, why, <laughs> it's nothing to me. <clears throat> <laughs> order, order. Your Honor, I'd like to call Mary O'Brien. You please call Mary O'Brien. Mary O'Brien.
You testified that you knew the boy very well. Sure. If there's anyone next to his blessed mother who knows more about the precious child, it's none other than myself. But that has nothing to do with the question I asked you. Will you please tell me if the child was kindly treated during his recent stay in his father's home? As a matter of fact, while in his father's home, didn't he receive every care and attention? And didn't his father engage a private tutor for his education? Well, as a matter of fact, if you want my private opinion of that private tutor that looked after his education... I'm not, at all, to... I'm not at all interested in your private opinions. Was the child well cared for? Well, that's what I'd be coming to if you'll just give me a chance to Will stop. you please answer the question, yes or no? Now, will you give me a chance? Please answer yes or no. Well, if you must have it his way... Yes. Thank you, madam. I suppose you're welcome. Just a minute, please. You have testified that a certain young lady named in this divorce action was a frequent visitor at the defendant's home. Now, will you tell the court, did you, on any of these occasions, actually see the defendant in what might be termed intimate or compromising situation with the young lady in question? If you're meaning that Holdsworth dame, she ain't no lady and there ain't no question about it. Your Honor, the prejudice of the witness is too self-evident to merit comment. That will be all. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to call as my next witness the child in question, Thomas Hall, Jr. Your Honor, we believed it most advisable to have the boy wait in the anteroom. At this time, however, I wish to protest against any such procedure. The boy is too young to be subjected to the proposed ordeal. If you really want the boy, it's your only chance. Your Honor, this action is not only one for divorce but for sole custody of the boy. Certain contentions have been made in the complaint which can be best verified or refuted by the boy himself. Consequently, before robbing a father of the companionship of his own son, I think it only fair that I'm inclined to agree with you. Will you please call Thomas Hall, Jr. Order! Thomas Hall, Jr. Thomas, do you know what an oath means? Yes, sir. I took an oath when I was on the safety committee in my classroom. It means I must tell the truth. You may swear him in. Stand up, Sonny. Now raise your right hand, please. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Now, Junior, I want you to tell the judge whether you would rather live with your father in his big, beautiful house with its gardens and swimming pool or in a house such as your mother has provided. Don't be afraid, Junior. Tell the judge just how you feel about it. Now, Junior, please. Won't you?
Won't you answer the question? Come, Junior. Answer the attorney's question. Oh, Your Honor, please. There must be some other way. Perhaps there is. Will the officers clear the courtroom? Clear the court, please. Clear the court. Come with me, son. Now, my boy, you want to help us, don't you? Yes, sir. Then why don't you answer the attorney's questions? Well, you see, he asked me about Mommy and Daddy. Yes, that's right. Well, gee whiz, that ain't a fair thing to ask a fella anyway. And besides, they shouldn't ask me the questions. Why not? Well, I mean... Oh, shucks, I bet if I was judge, I'd know who to ask the questions. <laughs> really? All right, Your Honor. Now, this is the courtroom, and you are the judge. Take this chair. Now, whom would you like to question? Mommy and Daddy. All right. Mr. Hall, will you step over here, please? Take this chair. All right, Your Honor. You may take the witnesses. You don't like having Daddy live in one place, and that's another, do you, Mommy? No, dear. Of course you don't. Because always when you said my prayers with me, didn't we say, let not our house be divided? You know what that means, don't you, Daddy? Well, I didn't until I asked Mommy. And she said it meant that we should all be together again. Now, didn't you? Yes, dear. You don't want the house to be divided. Do you, Daddy? No, son. I don't. Gee whiz, Mommy. Hear that? Daddy don't want to be divided. You don't want to be divided. And I don't. Because I kept praying hard, like you told me, that we'd all be together. And look at Here we are. Just the three of us again. Oh, boy, this is swell. And the first thing we'll do is fire that big sissy. <laughs> oh, you darling. 